First up, earlier this week, a viewer asked if we've ever discussed the ethics of news organizations printing or airing pictures of dead COVID patients. The viewer was taking issue with one such picture in the New York Times, calling it sensationalist. At any rate, we dug a little deeper into the issue, and we warn you, this story will contain pictures of the dead. The story that appeared in the New York Times last week was an in-depth look at how COVID-19 has affected areas of the Rio Grande Valley. There were many pictures illustrating a dire situation. Among them, this one, showing a patient moments after her death. And it's often said that a picture in many of these crises is worth a thousand words. And that's a sentiment shared by many in the news business, the fact that pictures can drive change. We had those visuals very much in the Vietnam War, and it changed our sense of that war. Pictures also changed the face of AIDS, and they galvanized the country when visuals from Hurricane Katrina proved massive government failure. We journalists haven't been able to cover coronavirus the way we normally cover wars from the front lines. That's New York Times columnist Nicholas Kristof, who spent two days inside New York's Elmhurst Hospital and drove the crisis home through images. I need a vent. I need a vent. I need a ventilator. But there have been few pictures of death itself, and many images have been blurred, which is why CNN gave viewers a warning before showing pictures of bodies at a Detroit hospital. Bodies filling freezer units, some even being stored in spare rooms. Still, much of what we see has been sanitized or simply off limits. During this pandemic, many of the images of those suffering and dying, of course, are behind closed doors in hospitals and in care homes which is likely one of the reasons the New York Times chose to publish this photo, and with the family's blessing. Yeah, Tom, just to be clear, uh, the New York Times uh, said that both the reporter and photographer there, that uh, the family was happy to have them there. They were with their mother, and they couldn't be because they weren't allowed in the room. So, um, And they, they gave their blessing to, to use the photograph. But, you know, I didn't realize this has been kind of a hot topic. Then Christiane Amanpour uh, anchored a whole discussion about this, but where they were... Um, Walter Isaac is arguing there's not enough pictures uh, of, of the dead and dying. And um, there's been a, a fair amount written about it, too, that we're, 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 we're so cautious these days about what we print. And that piece, by the way, in The New York Times was excellent. That was one photograph in a series of uh, a hard-hitting piece on why the Rio Grande Valley was hit so hard. Yeah. Now, this issue has been one, and perhaps um, those of us who have had to make decisions about when to publish, when to withhold it, uh, I think we've taken it for granted and maybe assumed that the issue has been settled. But what is different about the, uh, the COVID-19 issue is uh, the inability of people to actually be with the dying, to family members. So we've seen so many stories about, um, uh, about nurses and, um, calling family members using FaceTime and so forth, only to have some kind of human contact. I think the key issue always has been and remains today whether the use of that picture actually has a journalistic purpose. It's not for gratuitous reasons. It's not to be sensational. And I think in this particular case, the, uh, the photographer, Lindsay uh, Adario, uh, uh, it was an extremely sensitive mm. photo. You look at it closely. Yeah. What you see is the nurse at bedside touching the um, yeah. the recent deceased, yeah. and I think uh, it was, again. I think it was done very sensitively and appropriately. And people do need to see the the human right. side of the pandemic, not just the, the, the statistics which we see every day. One of the things I hear most often from people who do not want to wear masks or not concerned about what's going on is is that they don't know anyone who's gone through this. They don't know anyone who's died. Anyone who has sat next to a hospital bed while someone they love who is lying in it is dying will feel these pictures. All of a sudden, the faces, the images, the idea of COVID-19 becomes very real. And I think that's the power of these pictures. I'm glad to hear the family gave consent I'm glad to hear they gave their blessing. Um, knowing that makes me feel a bit better about seeing them. But I think they're an important part of the story in this case, as long as they're not used gratuitously. Yeah, journalists have an obligation to uh, proceed ethically at all times, especially in a situation like this. But you, uh, Tom and Lila have hit on the checklist. W was it taken with the family's permission and knowledge? Check. Was it sensationalized? No. 
was it fabricated or staged in any way? No. I'd like to know who objects to the publication of that photo. This is the reality. If it's a little bit too intense for you, skip right to the sports page. I think that's part of the problem for uh, a lot of American news, news consumers. News, uh, news outlets have, are always just a little bit shy about putting out these images because of the usual backlash from a lot of viewers. I agree with ev everything that everybody said. And even more importantly, we have seen the result of the power of the images not used gratuitously. So let's think about the fact that we didn't see those caskets coming home from yeah. Iraq. But when we started, when we, you know, file suit uh, journalists to get the permission to show those caskets coming back, that became real to Americans. It is a war and people are dying. And let me just remind you of the most recent thing. How many Americans sat and watched as George Floyd lost his life yeah. live? I mean, that's the power of the image. Yes, it happened. So I want to go back to, uh, to emphasize what everybody has said, that maybe some of this would go away. Some of this, people are making it up. Journalists just want to sell a newspaper or whatever if they saw more mm. of what the result is. Tom, I'm curious, when you were at the Miami Herald, if you ever had something that you regretted. I, rem I remember a few years ago, I think the Herald printed a picture of Victoria Snellgrove, who was shot after the ACLS championship. And then, of course, that picture a few years ago of the immigrant father and son lying face down uh, on the Texas border. So there are pictures that people have balked at. Yeah, there was um, one of the beheadings um, oh. that took place with ISIS, I think it was probably uh, the one that, um, uh, looking back on it, it, it just perhaps, not that there wasn't journalistic purpose. I think it uh, it hit every one of the marks that John mentioned, but uh, there is a point at which it may be too upsetting. That, that, uh, that might have been one. Mm, I can imagine that.